Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You all are um, achieving the uh, first objective of uh, anybody in this lecture room, which is to spread yourselves randomly around the room. Um, I apologize already for the heat in this room. We're in room 100, and they somehow think that's the temperature the room is supposed to be. Uh, and um, I would like to tell you I will fix it, but I, I can't. Um, uh, so we'll just see how it goes. Maybe it will correct. We have two temperatures in this room, 132. So uh, we'll see which one we end up with over the course of the day. So welcome uh, to the University of Michigan, to the University of Michigan Law School, uh, to the Center on Finance, Law, and Policy um, uh, conference with the um, Office of Financial Research, uh, Big Data in Finance. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here uh, with you um, today. Um, I should say, uh, I'm Michael Barr. Um, I teach here at the Law School and in the Ford School of Public Policy, and I'm the faculty director of the Center on uh, Finance, Law, and Policy. Um, I am uh, going to, in a moment, um, uh, uh, introduce Dick Berner, but uh, just let me start um, by welcoming you on behalf of myself uh, and Dick to this conference um, today. As all of you know, uh, the financial crisis of 2008 uh, crushed uh, both the U.S. and many economies around the world and cost millions of Americans their households, uh, their livelihoods, uh, their jobs, their businesses, their incomes. Um, and in the wake of the financial crisis, uh, there's been a lot of progress in making the system uh, somewhat safer and somewhat fairer, um, but we uh, all know that there's still a long way to go. Uh, and there are lots of things that we um, uh, do not know. And uh, one of the purposes of this conference is to discuss um, how to make progress on that. So I think it's useful to take a step back and think, why is it that we're meeting uh, on big data in finance? Big data um, can help us um, through um, a better understanding of financial stability. Uh, and to do that, we need some set of theory uh, of financial stability that we're going to be um, discussing uh, over the course of the next two days. Uh, we need data itself. Uh, and as it turns out, uh, as we'll talk about in many of our panels, uh, getting that data um, is not as easy as one uh, would hope, um, even if you have an office that is called the Office of Financial Research and the federal government seems very powerful. Um, I think Dick will explain to you it's uh, hard to get data. Um, we need better um, risk analytical tools, which I'll say about more in a minute. Uh, we need better risk management uh, within firms and in the federal government. Uh, so just having the data and understanding it is not enough. Uh, we need to embed that uh, data and that understanding in systems, in um, institutions uh, that enable us to act on that data. Uh, and then lastly, of course, we need both the legal authority and the political uh, will um, uh, within firms and in the government to act uh, on the basis of that understanding. Uh, and none of these really, I think, should be taken for granted. Uh, as I said, there has been a good bit of progress on analytics. Um, we're going to hear about some of these methodologies over the course of the day integrated into the panels. Uh, so I hear quite a bit about uh, how to use data using uh, uh, new approaches, uh, complex systems modeling, agent-based modeling, uh, dynamic stress tests, uh, crowdsourcing of data and analytics, um, and um, analogies from other systems like uh, bio uh, biology, public health, epidemiology that I think uh, will help us um, grapple with data in new and interesting ways. Uh, at the same time, um, there are lots of things we don't know, uh, lots of things that we don't know. So I'm going to give you five examples of things that we don't know uh, as a way of getting us started on uh, today. The first category of things are things that we used to know but have forgotten. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, we like in educational institutions and in general to think of uh, knowledge as being forward progress, uh, that only, uh, uh, knowledge only moves in one direction. Uh, but we all know through uh, studying history that sometimes we forget things, like um, we forget that home prices can decline nationally. Uh, in the United States. So we forgot that and then we remembered it again. Just because we remembered it again doesn't mean we won't forget it again. Uh, and so thinking about how to embed systems so that um, our forgetting 
um, happens um, with um, uh, happens less often, I think would be good. Uh, and um, also, I think we need to keep in mind as we're studying these questions that the question of forgetting is not um, only a matter of accident or um, increased risk tolerance uh, and the like, but it's also a kind of forgetting that can be um, bought and paid for. Uh, so we need to remember the role of politics um, in shaping our understanding of reality. Uh, the second uh, category of things are things that we know um, we could get access to, that is, they're knowable, but are kept hidden. And by this, I mean uh, categories of information uh, that are concealed by information arbitrage by firms or by a refusal to share nicely among regulatory agencies. Uh, so things that are knowable, um, but kept hidden. Uh, third uh, category of things we don't know are things we know but don't know what it means. So uh, we have a lot of data, but we don't have the um, intellectual capacity or firepower to make sense out of the data in ways that are useful and predictive of the future. Uh, the fourth category of thing, uh, perhaps more common to those of you in this crowd, but I think useful to remember, um, are the things we don't know that we don't know. Uh, the unknowable unknowables. Um, the imponderable imponderables for those of you who have, um, have religious bents. Uh, so uh, big category and of course uh, we don't know what they are. Um, and lastly, um, uh, and this is I think um, a continue of, of continued importance, um, what we should do about the things that we actually do know. Uh, so it's often the case that we have the data, we have the analytic tools, we have the understanding, uh, but we don't know what to do about them because uh, the choices involve very, very difficult trade-offs, and that applies to basically everything. Um, so figuring out uh, those trade-offs and which direction to go, I think, are, are critical um, in the future. So uh, we have, I think, um, a, um, a terrific um, uh, lineup uh, today uh, to talk about these issues. We have uh, uh, people today, uh, scholars, regulators, practitioners um, from a wide range of backgrounds, um, we're going to begin with a discussion after Dick's talk, a discussion of data privacy um, and security. Um, how can we ensure that data remains private, secure, accessible, and useful? Um, again, uh, presenting that trade-off. Uh, we're then going to segue into a panel on data quality, data gaps, information arbitrage. We're going to um, then go to lunch, um, where you'll have a chance to talk informally um, together just across um, of the quad, hopefully the rain. Um, will have ended by then, if it hasn't already. Um, and after lunch, uh, we're going to have a panel, uh, which I will chair, on big, uh, big questions about big data, ethical, legal, political, moral questions about uh, big data, who owns data, um, uh, and the like. And we'll conclude uh, today's um, session with a keynote uh, by uh, Sendhil Mullenathan from Harvard uh, University. And then tomorrow, we're going to dig uh, deeper into some of the practical challenges to data sharing, data transparency um, uh, within uh, government and across, um, inside and outside of government. We're going to have a panel on uh, computer science and engineering techniques um, in financial data modeling um, and uh, mapping. Um, and then uh, tomorrow at lunch, uh, SEC Commissioner Kara Stein will be providing a keynote address. And we'll uh, close with a panel on data integration and visualization. So uh, we have quite a, um, a full two days of um, activities uh, with all of you. Uh, I want to just uh, take a moment to thank uh, many people who have been uh, helping uh, put this conference together over uh, many, many months. Uh, first, the planning committee for the conference, um, uh, Matt Reed and Mark Flood and Miriam uh, Ochtenberger from the Office of Financial Research. Uh, John Burge from Chicago, H.V. Uh, Jagadish, Michael Wellman, and Ramesh Seigel from the College of Engineering here at Michigan, uh, Amitash Pernanendam from the Ross School of Business, Matthew Shapiro from the Economics Department, uh, Jeremy Kress from our Center on Finance, Law, and Policy, and uh, I especially want to thank uh, Christy Baer, who's sitting down here, who you'll see um, uh, quite a lot uh, over the next two days. Um, who is the uh, uh, who runs the Center on Finance, Law, and Policy, um, and uh, also Law School Events Manager uh, Jenny Ricard, who you met on the way in, uh, and her team, um, Sherry Fittich in my office. Um, let me um, also thank uh, our financial supporters for the conference: uh, the Smith's Ri Richardson Foundation, Omidyar Network, 
uh, the Law School, Engineering School, the Ross School of Business, uh, the Michigan Institute for Data Science. And we're also grateful for the support at the center, um, which uh, uh, indirectly supports this conference, uh, for the uh, support of John Loomis, Paul Lee, uh, Bill Marcoux, Stefan Tucker, and Ron Glantz. Uh, so that's um, uh, a wonderful uh, set of support groups um, here. So my last job uh, is to introduce Dick, um, which is always a delight and a pleasure to do. Um, all of you know Dick Berner, um, who is the director of the Office of Financial Research. Uh, and um, uh, Dick has been the director of OFR since uh, 2011. Uh, prior to that, uh, Dick was the co-head of global economics at Morgan Stanley. Uh, he served as chief economist at Mellon Bank, a senior economist from Morgan Stanley, Solomon Brothers, and Morgan Guarantee. Uh, he's worked on the Fed's uh, research staff um, and uh, received numerous forecasting awards in his private sector life uh, from Blue Chip Economic Indicators, the Wall Street Journal, Market News, uh, and the National Association for Business um, Economics. Um, uh, anybody um, uh, who's uh, been in and around Washington um, knows that it is very, 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 very hard uh, to start a new agency. Um, and I think we are all uh, deeply in Dick's um, debt um, for having started the Office of Financial Research, building it from scratch into um, uh, quite a serious um, enterprise in Washington. Um, uh, Dick has had to negotiate with other countries um, on complex issues um, of uh, data collection and standardization. Uh, and even harder, he's had to negotiate with his fellow agencies um, in the U.S. government. Uh, so this is a, a huge task. Um, Dick has met it um, with uh, extraordinary skill and grace, and uh, I think we all should be extremely grateful to him uh, for his service thus far. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Dick Berner.